Uh, this is the first um, presentation for the topic five market failure. What we're going to cover in this short video is the difference between a negative and a positive externality market failure. What we'll also think about is a solution to correct each of these different problems, but then ultimately how these solutions might not correct the problem either. So a negative externality market failure occurs when these products are overproduced and over consumed. Um, the, the reason why these products are over consumed and over produced is because of external costs. So now I'm going to introduce an equation which is social costs equals private costs plus external costs. And what creates the problem here are the external costs. So the situation we have is that when people consume negative externalities, so good examples here are things like driving their car, smoking, alcohol, uh, drugs, these different markets um, create external costs when they're consumed and when they're produced. In a free market economy, people will base their consumption solely on private costs. So the external costs get ignored. This means that the price that people pay is too low. We can graph this in two different diagrams. We've got an easy one and a more difficult one. We'll show both on the board. Go for the simple one first of all. So we're at this equilibrium point. P1, Q1. At this price level, P1, supply and demand are based solely on private costs. That means the cost of making this product will not reflect the external costs. So for example, uh, the cars, not the congestion it creates or the impact on the environment it creates and demand will do the same. So that means the price is too low. If we had no market failure, we'd have an equilibrium point at P2, Q2. At this point, all external costs are now being considered. If we go for the more difficult diagram, again we start with an equilibrium point. But what we have this time, demand is based on marginal private benefits and supply is based solely on private costs. So we've got this equilibrium point P1, Q1 again. And again remember here all external costs are being ignored. So if we corrected the problem, supply would be up here, where it is equal to full social costs. So again, if people paid full social costs, price would rise, and because of that, quantity would fall. So that's the problem we've got there. Now we've got to think about now is, if we've got this problem, how can the government intervene to correct this market failure? Now, some solutions you need to think about here are indirect tax. We could consider subsidies, which we'll get onto in a second. We could consider regulation. And we could also consider state production. Okay, now the top three, the most important ones, if we go for indirect taxation, first of all, if we can accurately shadow price or put a value on all the external costs, we can impose a tax which will make people pay for their external costs. In the diagrams, this would raise the price to P2, so people now pay for the external costs they create. This will reduce demand and supply, which solves the overproduction, overconsumption problem. Subsidies. Um, we've mentioned that cars create external costs, congestion on the roads and pollution problems. If we put subsidies on something like public transport, we can make that cheaper, which because it's a substitute to driving a car, more people should shift from the public transport, from their car towards public transport. Now regulation is used to limit 
the size of the external cost that people create. So, for example, from driving, there are regulations limiting who can drive, so you need a driving license, how fast you can drive, where you can drive, and the level of emissions that your car is allowed to create. Um, let's think very quickly about positive externalities. These are the exact, exact opposite of negative externalities. They are underproduced and they are under consumed. The problem we've got this time, if we were to introduce a new equation this time, we have social benefits, which are equal to private benefits plus external benefits. With positive externalities, people will ignore the external benefits, the benefits for society of people producing or consuming a certain product. Good examples here are things like education, um, healthcare, public transport, things that when they're consumed and produced create external benefits. So these goods and services tend to be undervalued in society. People undervalue them, therefore they underconsume them. Again, we've got diagrams we can use. We can go for a simple one. And again, we can go for a more difficult one. Start with a simple one, first of all. So remember, positive externalities, underproduced, underconsumed. We're at P1Q1. What we need to do here is to raise demand and supply of this product. So what would normally be used is a subsidy to raise supply to S1. At the new equilibrium point, prices fall which raises demand for the product. Let's consider the more difficult diagram. I'm going to draw two different demand lines. One which is based solely on the private benefits and one which is based on full social benefits. Again we've got a supply line. So the situation we find ourselves in is that with the market failure we are at P1, Q1. However, where we should be is at P2, Q2, where people are thinking about full social benefits. So what we need to try and do is to look at the marginal private benefit line and think, well, what can we do to price to get more people to consume it? So we go down the private benefit line to this point here. That point is so important because this is the point to people's demand line where they will consume Q2 of this product. So if we were to lower price to P3 for a subsidy, people will now demand Q2. So again, what we do, we get the supply line to cross that dot. This could be through the introduction of a subsidy, which means that we've corrected the market failure. So very quickly again, government interventions this time. We've mentioned subsidies. In theory, we could use an indirect tax. So, for example, if public transport is underproduced, underconsumed, if we impose a tax on cars, make them more expensive, more people in theory should shift across to public transport due to the low price. Um, again, we can use regulation. So here, we impose legal requirements for people to consume positive externalities. So, for example, we can, uh, with education, we know it creates external benefits, so more skills in the economy, more productivity in the future. We can force people to study, for example, study till the age of 16, makes it compulsory. And again, we can go for state production. Remember, positive externalities are underproduced. The government, in theory, could produce them on behalf of everybody free of charge. If they're free of charge, we should again have higher consumption of these. And that is an overview of negative and positive externalities.